you are constantly told to just change your mindset to improve your life. Be more positive, stop worrying, build better habits. But what does that actually mean inside your brain? What if I told you that changing your mind isn't just some fluffy metaphor? I'm a neuroscientist, and I'm here to show you how you can physically change your brain's structure and wiring, starting today. We're going to move past the vague self-help slogans and get into the practical science of how you can become the architect of your own mind. If you've ever felt stuck in a rut, wrestling with the same bad habit, caught in a loop of negative thoughts, or just failing to stay motivated, I want you to hear this. It's not a personal failing. It's a feature of your brain's design. Your brain is a brilliant efficiency machine. To save energy, it creates shortcuts for pretty much everything you do repeatedly. Think about driving a car. At first, it took every ounce of your concentration. Now, you can do it almost automatically. Those automatic behaviors are neural pathways, and you can think of them like well-worn trails in a forest. The more you walk down a certain path, the wider and clearer it gets. Eventually, your brain just takes that route by default. This is fantastic for useful skills, but it's also how bad habits and negative thought patterns become so deeply entrenched. Your brain isn't judging if a habit is good or bad. It's just following the path of least resistance. And that's how a habit loop is born. A cue in your environment triggers a routine, which leads to a reward, making the behavior automatic over time. On top of that, our brains have what's called a negativity bias. This is an ancient survival mechanism. Our ancestors had to be hyper aware of threats to stay alive, and that wiring is still with us. It means that even today, your brain is like Velcro for negative experiences and Teflon for positive ones. It latches onto criticism and lets praise slide right off. So when you feel stuck, you're not broken. You're working with a brain that's hardwired to automate behaviors and scan for danger. But the good news is, you're not stuck with that wiring forever. So what's the secret to getting unstuck? Well, it all comes down to a game-changing scientific discovery called neuroplasticity. For a long time, we thought the adult brain was more or less fixed. You got the brain you got, and that was that. We now know that's completely wrong. Neuroplasticity is the brain's remarkable ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout your entire life. It's not a myth or a nice idea. It's a fundamental property of your nervous system. Think of your brain as a sprawling, dynamic city. The neural pathways are the roads. Some are multi-lane superhighways. These are your deeply ingrained habits and beliefs. Others are little-used back roads. Neuroplasticity means that you get to be the city planner. You can decide to build brand new roads, and if you stop using the old superhighways, they'll eventually fall into disrepair. Every time you learn something new, challenge an old belief, or practice a new skill, you are physically changing your brain's structure. This means personal growth isn't just about willpower. It's about the biological process of rewiring. By understanding how this works, you can intentionally create the patterns, habits, and mindset you actually want. So, how do we actually do it? How do we become the active architects of our brains? The process isn't magical, but it is scientific. It requires three key ingredients. Step one is focused attention. Neuroplasticity in adults isn't a passive process. Unlike when we were kids, just being exposed to something new isn't enough to change our brains. For the brain to mark a connection as important and worthy of changing, you have to be alert and focused. This is literally the on switch for plasticity. Whatever you consistently focus on is what your brain will reinforce. If you constantly ruminate on your anxieties, you are physically getting better at being anxious by strengthening those neural circuits. Conversely, if you deliberately shift your focus towards solutions, gratitude, or learning, 
you begin to build and strengthen those pathways. The most powerful tool for this is mindfulness. Regular mindfulness practice has been shown to physically change the structure of the brain, especially in areas related to attention and self-awareness. You can start with just five minutes a day. The goal isn't to have an empty mind, but to practice bringing your focus back every time it wanders. Each time you do that, it's like a bicep curl for your attention muscle. Step two is deliberate practice. Once you have your brain's attention, you need to give it a new job to do. It's not enough to just think about changing. You have to take action to start carving that new neural trail. A killer strategy for this is to replace, not eliminate. Your brain hates a vacuum. Instead of trying to stop a bad habit cold turkey, keep the old cue, but swap out the routine. For example, if your 3 p.m. energy dip automatically sends you for a sugary snack, try replacing the snack with a five-minute walk outside. The walk gives you a different kind of reward while satisfying the original trigger. To make this even more effective, use if-then plans. Instead of vaguely saying, I'll exercise more, create a specific rule. If it is 7 a.m. and I have finished brushing my teeth, then I will immediately put on my gym clothes. This removes in-the-moment debate, making it much easier to execute the new habit. Finally, you can practice without even moving. Visualization is a powerful form of mental rehearsal. When you vividly imagine yourself performing a new skill, you activate many of the same neural circuits as you would if you were actually doing it. Step three is active reflection. This final step is the secret ingredient most people miss. It's like hitting the save button for your brain. Simply performing the new behavior isn't always enough. You need to send a clear signal to your brain that what you just did was important and rewarding. The technique is incredibly simple. After you perform your new desired behavior, you have to consciously pause and savor the feeling it produces. So, after you take that five minute walk instead of eating the cookie, take 30 seconds to really notice the fresh air. Notice the sense of accomplishment. This active reflection creates a small release of dopamine, the neurotransmitter for motivation and reward. This effectively tells your brain, hey, that was good. Remember this and make it easier to do next time. If this breakdown is clicking for you and you want more practical tools to take control of your mind, make sure you subscribe. And I've got a question for you. What's the one habit or mindset you are working on rewiring right now? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's put it all together. Feeling stuck isn't a moral failing. It's a product of your brain's brilliant but outdated wiring. The game changer is neuroplasticity, your brain's built-in ability to change. To harness this power, use focused attention to turn on your brain's change mode. Use deliberate practice to carve new neural pathways and use active reflection to savor your wins and tell your brain to save that new circuit. Changing your mindset isn't a soft, motivational platitude. It is the real, physical work of building a better brain. You have the biological capacity to change your life hardwired into your very being. The journey starts with a single, intentional action. So, what will you rewire your brain to achieve today?